Hi, my name is Paul, and I want to show you something that I found on Reddit this weekend. It's called Puck, and it is the visual editor for React. It empowers developers to build amazing visual editing experiences into their own React applications, powering the next generation of content tools, no-code builders, and WYSIWYG editors. So let's take a look at what that means. We have here a drag and drop interface, which I'm sure you've seen before in other applications, but this is pretty nice because we're able to actually define the React components that we want to make available and then easily update them with the, the properties that we need to use for them. So that's pretty cool. It allows us to create some pretty interesting experiences for either ourselves, for our content team, for our customers. Say for instance, you have customers who want to have control over their layout and don't want to have to necessarily bother you every time they want to make that sort of a change. Um, there's in fact lots of products. There's newsletters, there's dashboards that could really easily make use of this sort of a layout. We've had a need for things like this on our projects previously, and something like this would have actually been really helpful and saved us a lot of time and our, our clients a lot of money. So I want to show you a bit about how this fits into the existing ecosystem of the visual editing space going on in React right now. If we look, for instance, at Codux, which may have come to mind when I mentioned a visual editor for React, Codux is all about the crafting of the components itself. It's not necessarily about being the consumer of them, right? So you add in your div, you have your kind of Figma-esque experience over here on the right, where you see your props, at least you do earlier in the video. You have your props, you have your padding and your color, etc. The way that you want your content to be laid out. It's really powerful, it's really great for that purpose. But it's for the, the technical team, right? This is more for the content creation team. If those happen to be the same people, obviously, that is the same people, but you don't have to be technical at all to use this. You can really imagine, um, you know, as I said, your content team or like a non-technical executive creating their own dashboard for themselves to, um, you know, at, at runtime, uh, over the course of their day, as they're going through activities, updating the interface that they need to grab the data that they need uh, and lay it out the way that they want for a presentation or whatever, right? So I actually wanted to take this a step further. The value proposition for Puck is really interesting, but if you add something like V0 from Bercel on top of it, it becomes pretty interesting for something like prototyping. So, you know, I went into V0 here, I just, my prompt was a SAS dashboard, and it came back with this. And so that's really great. Um, obviously, it's static React components, but it's a great starting point, especially if I want to get moving, working through my idea on how I want to lay out my product, but I'm not necessarily sure exactly what I want to do, but I want to have something that actually does something as fast as possible. So, you know, I come in here to V0, I NPX it into my product or in, into my project, and then I jump over here. And these are the components that I got from V0. And of course, V0 is going to give it to me as, you know, card title, card header, card button, whatever. It's going to chop things up really finely. Uh, and it's also going to do them in the syntax that it normally uses with forward refs and props, etc. Um, for the simple demo, anyway, it seemed more straightforward to me in Puck to just kind of render all of that as the card component passing in props like title and subtitle, etc. And so, having then taken the time to combine the markup for the card component, I was able to get a nice component like this, where of course I have those same fields available. Now, I'm just passing the icon as an SVG and then applying that to the div. Um, likewise, you know, you can up update the values here. So then you can also do layouts. And so you know, here we have our three, our three column grid. And then here below, we also have a three column grid, nothing in the last column, similar to what we saw in our V0 dashboard here. But you know, here the idea is I'm, I included an endpoint field for both of these components. These are just the static markup directly out of the SAS dashboard, but because I'm just doing a fast demo, you can, I'm sure, imagine how you would fetch data from an endpoint doing this. But the point is that the user can actually choose what endpoint they want to use, and you could give them a list of endpoints because obviously they might not know the endpoints off the top of their head. You could just say, show me the list of users, show me recent orders, etc. And I can either test my ideas that I want to do for my layout if I'm prototyping or, you know, somebody who is on the content side or the administration side can come and create their own layouts for the charting that they need or the information they need, et cetera, et cetera.
So just want to give a shout out to the Measured team. They are the ones who open sourced this and made this available. It's an awesome tool. We definitely plan to use it in our workflows. Hope it helps you guys. So that said, if you got some value out of this video, drop us a like below, subscribe, leave us a comment, let us know how you might use this in your workflow, and we will see you next time.